Assalamualaikum guys, Ifan back again with another video and this video is the part 2 grade 5 math fraction word problems part 2 and like the part 1 this uh, video is also targeted towards the parent uh, community so let's get started okay so let's just quickly recap what a fraction is now when we take an object and we divide that into a number of equal parts then each part is called a fraction for example 2 divided by 5 that's a fraction now we'll use examples from a farm to learn more about fractions and fraction word problems question number one a pumpkin was harvested three-fourths of a month early when it was harvested its weight was eight and a half pounds. This weight was three and a half pounds less than the average weight of a pumpkin. What is the average weight of a pumpkin? So now we'll uh, try and solve question number one. As we had done in the previous video, what we are going to do, be doing is we're going to be identifying the useless and the useful information that's given in the question. First, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be looking at what the useless information is uh, in this question because sometimes what, what happens is there's information in, in the question that is not uh, useful to, to come to the solution. So there will be information that's useless uh, and that you have to kind of uh, watch out for and ignore. Okay, so in this question, uh, the pumpkin was harvested three fourths of a month early. And what we are trying to find out is its weight. So the you know how much early the pumpkin was harvested is useless information. We have already identified now what the useless information is. So now what we need to do is we need to turn our attention to what the useful information is. Now uh, the useless information is in red. Uh, so we already we've already got that identified. So now we, if we go further. Uh, moving along, uh, when it was harvested, it weighed, it weighed was eight and a half pounds. Now this is useful information. This weight was three and a half pounds less than the average weight. This again is a useful information. So we'll highlight those in a different color. So we know uh, we've got the uh, useless information in red and we've got the, uh, the useless information in red and the useful information in gold. So now what we have done is we have identified the useless information and we have identified the useful information. Now, in order to solve this question, what we have to do is uh, we have to find out what the average uh, weight of the pumpkin is. Now, uh, we, the, the useful information was that its weight uh, was eight and a half pounds at uh, harvest. This weight was three and a half pounds less than the average. So if you add these two, two numbers together, you will get what the average weight of a pumpkin is. So uh, let's solve question number one. Uh, what we will be doing is we will actually be uh, breaking this up into three parts. Part one and part two, what we'll be doing is reorganizing the useful information that we had. And in the part three, we'll actually be do, uh, solving the question. So let's uh, do the first part. Now, we were told that the pumpkin weighed eight and a half pounds at harvest, okay? So eight, one by two. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to convert that into a Im uh, improper fraction, okay? Now, eight, we can uh, rewrite eight as 16 upon two. What we are trying to do is make the denominator the same for, the, uh, for eight and for one. So it's 16 upon two plus one upon two, which gives you 17 upon 2. Now, the other useful piece of information that we had that was that the pumpkin at harvest weighed three and a half pound less than the average. Okay, so uh, three and a half, three, one by two. Now, we, what we'll do is we'll convert this into an improper fraction also. So we can rewrite three as uh, six upon two and then plus one upon two. Again, what we're trying to do is make the denominator the same. Uh, so 6 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 gives you 7 upon 2. Now we've got uh, 
part one and part two uh, figured out. Now we, what we do in part three, we'll actually be solving the problem. Now, what we had discussed uh, just now was uh, in order to find out what the average uh, weight of a pumpkin was at harvest, what we're going to do is we're going to add what the, uh, the weight of the uh, harvested pumpkin was and add the, you know, three and a half pounds, you know, because the harvest pumpkin weighed three and a half pounds less than the average. So we're going to add those two numbers up. So uh, eight and a half, we rewrote that as 17 upon two and three and a half, we rewrote that as seven upon two. So if you add those two together, that will give you 17 upon two plus seven upon two. Now that would be 17 plus seven upon two. Now 17 plus seven gives you 24 upon two and 24 upon two can be simplified into 12. So the average weight of pumpkin at harvest is 12 pounds. Question number two, in the barn, five eighths of the animal uh, animals are cows and the rest are bulls. Five twelfth of the uh, staff that works on the farm works part time. Now, what is the fraction of the animals that in the barn that are bulls? The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to identify what the useless information is and what the useful information is. Certain number of people uh, that work at the farm work part time. That has got nothing to do with, you know, uh, what percentage of the animals in the barn are cows or bulls. So the 512 of the uh, staff that works part time, that is useless information. The information that 58 of the uh, 58 of the animals are cows and the rest are bulls. That's useful information. So we will highlight that in golden. So now we've got the, uh, the useful information identified and we've got the useless information identified. Now we can see the five eighth of the animals are cows and the rest are bulls. And we need to find out what the percentage is or what fraction are bulls. So what you do is you just uh, take one and you subtract five, five by eight from it. In order to find out what fraction of the animals in the barn are bulls, uh, we have been told that the five, five eighth of the animals are cows and the rest are bulls. So uh, we said that, you know, figure out if you take one and you, uh, and you subtract five by eight from it, you will get your answer. You will get the number of uh, the fraction of the animals that are bulls. So let's, if you solve this, it's going to be one minus five by eight. Now we can rewrite one as eight by eight. The idea is we want to make the denominator the same as five by eight. So it's going to be eight by eight, eight over eight minus five by eight. Now that would be uh, eight minus five is three. So three by eight, that would be an answer. Three by eight of the animals are bulls. Question number three, the horses are available for public riding two times in a day. The riding is done for five hours in the morning and three hours in the evening. What fraction of the time are horses rode in a day? The public are allowed to feed the horses for two hours in the afternoon. Now, once again, what we will do is we will go through the question and we will highlight the useless information in red and highlight the useful information in gold. The statement that the public are allowed to feed the horses for two hours in the afternoon, this is highlighted in red because that is useless information that has no bearing on uh, the times uh, of the day in which the horses are rode. The fact that horses are available for riding twice in a, in a day and the riding is done five hours in the morning and three hours in the evening, that is useful information. So we'll highlight that in gold. Okay, so let's uh, analyze the information that has been given to us in the question. Now, we have been told that the morning rides are five hours, the evening rides are three hours, so the total rides are eight hours, and we have a total of 24 hours in a day. 
based on the information that has been given to us. So let's go ahead and uh, try and solve this question. Now the morning rides were five hours. So five upon 24, 24 is the total hours in the day, plus three hours of evening rides, so three upon 24. Now, if you add these two together, because the denominator is the same, 24 on the, for five and three, that would be eight upon 24. Now you can reduce this uh, fraction by dividing the numerator by eight and the denominator by eight. So eight divided by eight in the numerator and 24 divided by eight in the denominator. And you get one upon three. So one, one third of the day is when the horses are available for rights. Question number four. Horses need to be reissued every four to six weeks irrespective of whether they have worn the shoes out or not. Now, Bob rides his house every day for 30 minutes. What fraction of the time in a day does he not ride his horse? Now, what we need to do is figure out what the useless information is and what the useful information is in the question. And uh, like always, what we'll do is we'll label the useless information in red and the useful information in gold. Okay, so let's get started. Now, uh, horses need to be reissued every four to six weeks, irrespective of whether they have worn, the uh, worn out the shoes or not. That is useless information because that has no bearing on what, what the question wants you to calculate. Okay, we figured out what the useless information is. Now, let's figure out what the useful information is. Now, Bob rides his horse every day for 30 minutes. That's useful information, okay? Because if you see, the question is, what fraction of time in the day that he does not ride? So obviously, uh, in the 24 hours, for 30 minutes, he's not, he's, he's riding, and the rest, uh, he's not. So uh, Bob riding his horse every day for 30 minutes, that's useful information. We have been given two key pieces of information. One, Bob rides his horse every day, and he rides it for 30 minutes. In order to solve this question, uh, there are two ways to do this. Uh, first of all, uh, we are talking about Bob riding his horse every day. So in a day, they are 24 hours, but he rides it for 30 minutes every day. Okay. So either we have to convert the 24 hours into minutes or convert the 30 minutes into hours. Okay. Now, it is easier to convert the 30 minutes into hours. They are 60 minutes in an hour. So 30 minutes mean half an hour. The other way to do this would be uh, there are 24 hours in a day. Now there are 60 minutes in an hour. So the total number of minutes in a, in a day would be 24 multiplied by 60. Okay, so let's solve. First thing what we're going to do is we are going to convert the 30 minutes into hours. So 30 uh, minutes out of 60 minutes. Uh, this can be simplified by dividing the numerator by 30 and the denominator by 30. So 30 divided by 30 gives you 1 and 60 divided by 30 gives you 2. So uh, six, 30 minutes is basically 1.2 hours. But 30 minutes is half hour. So now we've got the 30 minutes converted into hours. Now we look at the 24 hour the full day. Now 24 hours would be 24 upon one. Now uh, in order to do any calculation, what we would need to do is uh, the minutes were converted into one upon two hours. So the denominator was two. So the 24 upon one, we need to convert it so that the denominator is also two. Uh, the way we do that is we multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. So that gives you 48.2. If you remember, we had to figure out how many hours Bob did not ride his horse. So it's going to be 48 by 2 minus 1 by 2. That would be because the denominators are the same. So it would be 48 minus 1 upon 2. That would give us 47 upon 2. That can be simplified into 23 
1 upon 2. So 23 and a half hours is a, it's a duration for which Bob does not ride his horse. That brings us uh, to the end of this uh, video. There's a part two of uh, fraction word problems. If you like this video, please kindly give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe and also do let us know what you thought in the comment section uh, below. And if you would like to go back and see part one, uh, that's uh, you can see the link up on the top right corner. Click on the link and it will take you to part one.